You're watching KCCI, Channel 8, Des Moines. Iowa's news leader and home of live Super Doppler. This is KCCI News Channel 8 at noon. U.S. military officials say we are hitting the enemy hard as the Taliban and Al-Qaeda forces keep their vow to fight to the death. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. Taliban and Al-Qaeda fighters are showing no signs of surrender as Operation Anaconda continues in Afghanistan. And as Dodge Billingsley reports, the weather may make things more difficult for U.S. soldiers. U.S. military spokesman said there were numerous al-Qaeda casualties in overnight fighting, but added they were still facing a determined enemy. Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, these remnants, they may be a man here, two men there, three men there, and they are capable, they have mortars, they have rifles, they have RPGs, and you can be in control, but they can still take shots at you. We're sitting up and all of a sudden rounds came in, bouncing off the rocks in front of us, and then mortars. Uh, been shot at before, but not like that. Mortar rounds suck. We were just getting ready to eat chow. Sitting around. All of a sudden we heard a round go off. We figured somebody may have had an AD. Then we heard another one. You start hearing them whiz by your head, so we both took cover. Pinpointed where the attack was coming from. Returned fire. This is also a very difficult campaign. The elevation varies from about 7,500 feet to 9,000 feet. It's snowy, it's rocky. These soldiers were humping 50 to 100 pounds of weapons, ammunition. They, some of them had mortar rounds in their backpacks, ammunition belts strung over. They were heavily loaded, and they were hiking up the sheer side of mountains and along through creek beds and on rocks and through mud. There were soldiers who had altitude sickness. Some passed out along the way. But all in all, 99% of the, all the combat soldiers there made it up the hill and then just laid down the side of the hill for a two or three hour nap. I mean, it wasn't a camp. It was a cold, miserable night, but basically everybody made it. And then the next day they get up and the sun starts beating down on you and you get hot, you get sunburned, your lips are chapped. So you go from one extreme to the other and that's life for these guys out there right now. Dull skies here mean bad weather in the mountains. That could hamper U.S. airstrikes, a temporary advantage to Al-Qaeda and Taliban holdouts. Dodge Billingsley for CBS News, in Bagram, Afghanistan. Meantime, two Iowa senators, congressmen rather, want soldiers from Davenport to get danger pay. Members of the 339th Military Police Company are guarding prisoners in Cuba. Senator Charles Grassley and Congressman Jim Leach want to know if those soldiers qualify for a $150 a month bonus known as imminent danger pay. The U.S. Army is honoring soldiers injured in last week's fighting. And that story continues our look as America fights back. The ceremony this morning at the Bagram Air Force Base included six soldiers injured last Saturday. It's a special day for women in Afghanistan. They're celebrating International Women's Day, the first time since the end of the Taliban rule. Under the Taliban, women were kept from working and being educated. Afghan's interim leader, Hamid Karzi, joined in the celebration today promising to improve the status of women and to protect their rights. And a tribute of light will mark the six-month anniversary of the World Trade Center collapse. Twin beams of light pointed a mile into the sky will be lit Monday and will glow from dusk to 11 at night every night for 32 days. And after months of going back and forth between Democrats and Republicans, Congress has passed an economic relief package. This version falls short of President Bush's version, but it still includes expanded unemployment benefits and tax cuts for businesses. The Senate passed it this morning after it cleared the House yesterday. Three prior versions that were passed by the House were blocked in the Senate. More antitrust trouble for Microsoft. Sun Microsystems has filed a lawsuit against the software giant. It's seeking more than $1 billion, claiming that Microsoft engaged in extensive anti-competitive practices. For Iowa communities, we'll be losing a big discount store. Kmart has announced it is closing 284 stores in 40 states. Here in Iowa, that includes Fort Dodge, Clinton, Spencer, and the Kmart at Northeast 14th in Des Moines. The company says it is closing the stores as part of its reorganization under bankruptcy protection. About 22,000 employees will be affected by the move. Kmart says it should save about $550 million this year and nearly $45 million a year after. Discount retailer currently operates more than 2,100 stores nationwide. 
One store not on the list is the one in Webster City. Residents there were so worried that their store would be closed, they started a campaign to save it, writing letters and making calls to Kmart headquarters. Luckily, the store will keep its doors open. In other business news this noontime, a federal judge has overturned Iowa's ban on double ATM fees. Iowa kept banks from charging an extra fee if a non-customer used its ATM. This makes Iowa the last state to ban the extra fees. The Iowa Attorney General's office is deciding whether or not to appeal the judge's ruling. A semi-accident on the East Mixmaster early this morning made quite a mess. Iowa State Patrol officers say the driver of this semi-truck lost control as he was exiting onto I-35 northbound outside of Des Moines. The driver escaped with just minor cuts and bruises, but as you can see, his cargo wasn't quite as lucky. The semi was hauling beer. Hundreds of cases of beer bottles spilled into the ditch. Crews didn't get the mess cleaned up for several hours. Several young people are still in the hospital recovering from yesterday's chemical accident at the downtown Marriott. One boy is in fair condition, two others are in good condition at Blank Children's Hospital. An adult is in fair condition at Methodist. A hotel employee mistakenly mixed two chemicals so that a cloud formed in the pool area. More than 30 people were treated, and injured rather, and treated for respiratory problems. The hotel planned to reopen the pool today. And in other news this morning, a man has, this, this afternoon rather, a man has pleaded guilty to killing a Des Moines man against the advice of his lawyers. Michael Denon pleaded guilty to the stabbing death of 39-year-old James Hottishell last fall. Denon was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Denon says he killed Hottishell for his electronics so Denon could exchange them for drugs. And from our Western Iowa Live link today, the FBI is investigating charges of child pornography against a Glenwood Middle School teacher. The school superintendents say officials believe the teacher was viewing pornography on school computers. The superintendent says he has placed the teacher on leave and contacted the FBI. The school will not say anything further until the investigation is complete. Now it's time to check in with Curtis Gertz to find out what the weekend holds mm. for us weather-wise. Hey, Curtis. A lot of extremes out there across the state, uh, mid-20s, northwestern Iowa, mid-60s, southeastern Iowa. We're starting to see some showers move into the western part of the state, drizzle and fog here in the metro. We'll zoom in. Now, the good news is the areas in green see some showers, but temperatures there presently around Harlan, 36 degrees. So that is falling as rain, but as this moves to the north, we're going to start to see some freezing rain. School net stations, you can see the temperatures from Humboldt to Farnhamville and Carroll below freezing so that liquid precipitation could fall there and form some ice on the roadways and the walkways. Keep that in mind. For the, that reason, a winter weather advisory in effect for a combination of ice and snow into northwestern Iowa late this afternoon and through tonight. Could see about two to three inches of snow up there in a, and also the ice accumulation, so some problems there. Five-day forecast talks about the weekend, a lot of wind in the beginning of the weekend. We'll talk about that and all your weather coming up in just a little bit. That sounds familiar with the wind. I yeah, don't know, it's the been kind of consistent this year. Windy huh? weekends. All right, thanks a lot, Curtis. Still to come today, the controversy over the auction of some Malcolm X artifacts and how his family is trying to preserve them. And they're mourning those killed by violence in the Middle East, while the fighting there seems to be getting worse coming up. Also, a hit and run that turned into much more than just that when the driver refused to help the man who was stuck in her windshield. Stay with us. You're watching KCCI News Channel 8 at noon. Iowa's news leader. With Molly Cooney. Marcus McIntosh and meteorologist Curtis Gertz with exclusive live Super Doppler weather. This is KCCI News Channel 8. A tragic and bizarre story coming from Fort Worth, Texas today where a woman faces murder charges after being involved in a car accident. The woman hit a homeless man, then left him stuck in her windshield to die slowly over two days. Maureen Maher reports. In Fort Worth, Texas, say this park is the final scene in a bizarre and twisted story of torture and cruelty. Last fall, 25 year old Shante Mallard struck a homeless man with her car on this highway. He ended up inside the windshield of the car, um, still alive, pleading for help, and she basically drives him with him still inside the car to her home, pulls into the garage shuts the garage door. Police say Mallard went in and out of the garage over the next few days, apologizing to the homeless man who was still stuck in the windshield, begging for help. 
Mallor told police after the man died, she and friends dumped his body in the park. The victim was Gregory Biggs, who listed this Fort Worth shelter as his home address. They didn't think anybody else cared, why should they? And it's, it's a serious problem. People do care. They have families, they have lives just like everyone else. Biggs bled out and died of shock in the garage, but the medical examiner says he could have lived with proper treatment. Mallard's attorney says his client is not a murderer. This young lady was emotionally distraught. This was an accident, pure and simple, uh, and she made a bad choice. This week, Shante Mallard was charged with murder, but police are still looking for those who helped her to cover up her alleged crime. Prosecutors have yet to decide if they'll seek the death penalty. Maureen Maher, CBS News, Dallas. Violence rages on in the West Bank and Gaza in the bloodiest day of the 18-month Palestinian uprising. While fighter jets and helicopters launch air assaults, ground troops are raiding West Bank towns. And this story tops our look at headlines from around the world. Israeli forces also conducted sweeps in two villages in northern Gaza, and gunboats and helicopters struck a police base north of Gaza City. Palestinian sources say at least 26 Palestinians have been killed in the attacks, including a senior military commander. Meantime, hundreds of Israelis and Palestinians buried their dead today after the overnight fighting. The family of Malcolm X is taking its case to court, hoping a judge will put a stop to a planned auction featuring a collection of his personal items. The collection went on public display today at a California auction house. Spokesman for the auction house says the owner acquired the items at a legal auction. But Malcolm X's relatives fear that may not be the case. It's not just dogs trekking across the uh, Diderot Trail. An Alaskan man, Dennis Douglas, is walking the 1,049-mile trek from Anchorage to Nome to honor the firefighters killed in the terrorist attacks. Douglas also hopes to raise money for the firefighters' families. Douglas got an early start beginning his walk in the middle of February. <laughs> Ice and snow in northwestern Iowa. Severe thunderstorms possible southeastern Iowa. Super Doppler forecast next. This live Super Doppler 8 forecast is sponsored by Manufacturer's Furniture Showroom. Keeping Central Iowa ahead of the storm. Your live Super Doppler 8 forecast. Welcome back, everyone. West Sky Cam pointing it out. A dreary day out there. Still some light fog, patchy drizzle, but temperatures above freezing. And actually, our temperature is going to be climbing a little later this afternoon. 37 degrees northeast winds today. They'll be shifting around to the south over about the next three hours. Wind chill presently at 31. Dew point 36. You'd expect a high relative humidity, 96%. And the barometer 29.79. And presently falling. Live super Doppler starting to pick up some showers out to the west again. Temperatures there above freezing, but northwestern Iowa temperatures below freezing. Could see some icing over the next couple of hours, but some showers pushing north out of Harlan. Headed up into Carroll County right now where the temperature is around 30, 31 degrees. So again, the potential for some icing there, and hence a winter weather advisory in effect for northwestern Iowa. School net stations out there also showing this. Rockwell City, 30 degrees. Coon Rapids, 31. That winter weather advisory runs through Carroll and up through Calhoun County and Humboldt County and areas to the northwest. The rest of us starting to see the temperatures go up a bit. 40 in Newton, Knoxville 41, Sheridan 42, and 36 degrees right now in Creston. Across the Midwest, a huge contrast in temperatures. Single digits in North Dakota, near 70 degrees right now in St. Louis. And the contrast of the air mass is a little later this afternoon. The potential for some severe thunderstorms in Kansas, Missouri, and possibly moving into southeastern Iowa. Regional radar, the white line you see here, 32 degree line starting to push up, but northwestern Iowa will stay below freezing all day long. The rest of us will start to see those rising temperatures. Thunderstorms early this morning in eastern Iowa, now pushing into parts of Indiana and Michigan. Frontal boundary pushing to the north, south winds picking up. The system moves on through with showers and thunderstorms, snow wrapping around, especially to our north, and then some very strong winds early on Saturday. Predict the computer model, 6 o'clock tonight, showers here, ice northwestern Iowa, some snow in South Dakota, showers and thunderstorms, 10 o'clock, then notice some ice, snow to the northwest, and then as we head through Saturday, more wraparound snow northwestern Iowa, extreme northwestern Iowa, 4 to 5 inches, and possibly about 1 to 2 as you head a little closer uh, over towards uh, Calhoun and Carroll County, and through the rest of Sunday, it looks to be fairly quiet. Winds also a problem. Notice the wind shift at 6 o'clock tonight out of the south. 
Watch the frontal boundary move on through about 1048 tonight. And then early on Saturday, some very, very strong winds through the morning hour. Those winds do look to settle down, though, later in the day on Saturday and into Sunday. So your forecast for today, depending on where you're at, but here in the metro, 45 degrees, showers likely, a chance of thunderstorms here, better chances down to the southeast, ice and snow to the northwest, south winds eventually 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, showers, thunderstorms, and then changing over to snow and wind late, 22 degrees, northwest winds 15 to 30, but gustier than that early on Saturday. Five-day forecast, tonight we run tomorrow windy, but uh, possibly some flurries around 30 degrees. Sunday, 40, and then a rise in temperatures on Monday, 49, and a chance of showers on Tuesday, 47. Two areas to keep an eye on today, northwestern Iowa, with the potential for ice with snow accumulation mm -hmm. there. Not a lot of snow, but with the wind, could cause some slick roads. And then from the metro down to the southeast, we'll keep an eye out for possibly the strongest severe thunderstorms. All right. Just batting down the hatches for a couple this days. This looks to be a busy day. <laughs> Glad I got paid. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And just so everyone knows, Calhoun Colony Salt, seniors and lawmen together, they postponed that meeting tonight at Manson Golden Meadow. So that meeting has been postponed. And if you're ready to dance and have a good time, have we got something that might hit you right in stride? It's the Torch Run Celebration. More after the break. the minute weather information day or night call the live super doppler 8 forecast at 247-8880 sponsored by applebee's good afternoon and welcome back what is your legal limit well if fun is involved the sky may be the limit it's all part of the celebration of the torch run for the special olympics tomorrow night's legal limit will be in tune to provide music for the celebration at the tourism building on the state fairgrounds to tell us more we're joined by Jeanette Steinfeld of the Special Olympics and Ray Gallardo. He's a police officer and he is a musician in Legal Limit. I guess, Jeanette, my first question is for you. This all kind of revolves around the torch run. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we have what we call a law enforcement torch run that benefits Special Olympics Iowa. We have over 500 officers from around the state who raise money for Special Olympics along with running the torch run into our opening ceremonies for our state summer games. And when does all that take place? The torch run is May 13th through the 16th. The final leg starts in Nolan Plaza and runs to Ames on May 16th with the opening ceremonies that night up at Hilton Coliseum. Does this just get bigger and bigger every time? It does get, it just gets a lot bigger. Um, this year the torch run is hoping to raise over $200,000 for Special Olympics. And how important is that torch run? I mean, you said it raises some $200,000 for Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. Is this a good portion of the money raised yearly by Special Olympics? It's probably about 20% of our budget. And um, not only does it raise money for Special Olympics, but it creates awareness for us. Um, which is um, huge for our program. Ray, got to ask you, you're playing tomorrow night from midnight, from 8 to midnight at mm -hmm. the tourism building on the fairgrounds, legal limit, a band of police officers. Mm -hmm. How'd that whole thing come together? Oh, about nine years ago, started thinking about uh, getting a band together of some police officers just for fun. That's what I did before I was a police officer. I was a musician around Des Moines for about 15 years. Okay. Anyway, uh, got a group of guys together, and this is what we... Uh, the result of it is this band, and, and we have a lot of fun. Basically, it's it's to go to, to schools and talk to the kids about drugs and gangs and things like that. It's a it's a wonderful program that we've been doing for like eight years for the kids around the metro area. It sounds like it's a wonderful thing. What is the response from the young people when you play for them? When you go to the schools and when you play at an event like this coming up on Saturday night? Well, going to the schools, you know, the kids, obviously, they see us in uniform when we're playing, and we immediately have their attention, and we can talk to them about important issues that we think should carry into their lives and, and make them better citizens. And going into this event, uh, this fundraiser, we like to do a lot of fundraisers yeah. because that's all also part of our, our purpose is to raise money for things like this. A good time and lots of dancing Saturday A lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're going to put up a graphic of when and where it all takes place. It takes place this Saturday night. It starts at 8 and runs to midnight at the Tourism Building at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Tickets are still available. Call 515-267-0131. If you get them in advance, they're $20, right? Oh, Correct. At the door, they're $25. At the, at the door, they're $25. If you do say you saw it on Channel 8, you can get in for the $20. Oh, wow. So, hey, there special you go. Deal. Special <laughs> deal. Special deal. It's a special deal. Ray, 
Jeanette, thank you very much for joining us. Thank we you. We really appreciate you coming in. Thank you. We'll have much more coming up on News Channel 8 Live at noon in just a minute. Stay with us. Flying garbage can lids and small dogs. Is that right? <laughs> small children. I like that little intro there. Thank get, you. Get people going. Yeah. Winter weather advisory for northwestern Iowa. A combination of ice and snow there. Very slick roads, especially as that precipitation moves in. They're going to see some ice and snow forming uh, a little later tonight. So keep that in mind to the northwest. The rest of us probably going to see showers, even some strong thunderstorms. We'll keep an eye out for potentially a few severe thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. Saturday, snow early, accumulations northwest as high as 5 inches. Here, probably little or no accumulation, but a lot of wind early on Saturday and warm-up for Sunday and Monday. Wow. I like the warm-up. Deal with the wind. Thanks for joining us all this week. Have a good weekend. See you Monday. <laughs>